I'm Trey Mansdorfer, a program manager for Azure Networking. I'm very excited to be speaking virtually uh, for this presentation today. So today I'll be speaking on resilience and protection through zero trust and networking. I'll be diving into what a zero trust approach is for networking, why it is important, and how Microsoft solutions can be utilized to build a segment network. I'll first break down two scenarios on segmentation and threat protection. Then I'll demo Azure's global web application firewall and its ability to protect against threats. Security challenges have become more complex over time. The common trend in security attacks is that threats have seen increases in frequency, size, and sophistication over time. With the existing state of security challenges and future expectations of security challenges, a zero trust approach solution is the most comprehensive method in protecting digital resources. A zero trust approach is a modern approach to security which treats every access attempt as if it's originating from an untrusted network. So instead of believing everything behind a corporate firewall is safe, a zero-trust approach assumes a security threat at every digital interaction. Every access request is strongly authenticated, authorized within policy constraints, and inspected for anomalies before granting access. So everything from the user's identity to the application's hosting environment is used to verify the request and prevent breach. So in short, the Zero Trust approach has three guiding principles that are applied contextually on a digital resource. The first is verifying explicitly. Always authenticate and authorize based on all available data points for any sort of interaction. The second is using least privileged access, which involves limiting user access with just in time and just enough access. The third is assuming breach. This involves minimizing the blast radius for breaches and preventing lateral movement through segmentation. So let's do a conceptual breakdown of the impact that the zero trust approach would have across a company's digital estate. Here you can see the six elements that exist for a company's digital estate. First we have identities. Identities can be the people on the network. In a zero trust approach, identities should be given the least privileged access to a resource. Trust should not be overextended. In apps and devices and infrastructure, we can highlight the importance of using analytics to respond to threats. Devices and apps should be monitored to ensure they meet a standard of health. Then lastly, we can look at using the zero trust approach for a company's data. All data should be classified and encrypted, and access to the data should be limited. So hopefully this gives some greater clarity on what the zero trust approach looks like for other elements of someone's digital estate. In networking, the focus of the zero trust approach is to create an infrastructure to prevent attacks from moving laterally across the network. So in other words, if two resources share a connection and one resource has a security threat breach, the other should not be impacted. So to prevent the spread of attacks, there are three core principles for the zero trust approach in networking. First, it's segmentation. Segmentation involves the separation and distribution of resources. Next is threat protection. Threat protection means that the attacks are detected and mitigated with machine learning and context-based filtering. And lastly, a network should use encryption across all traffic. So from this past slide, these three principles that were just talked about should be some of the main takeaways for the zero trust approach of networking. A great analogy to further break down threat protection and segmentation would be by bringing in the comparison of a house versus an apartment complex. The traditional corporate approach to security would be a standard house. Security on a standard house exists at the front door. Once you break past the front door, you have access to all the rooms in the house. A thief could rob the kitchen, the dining room, the bedroom, or any room that they wanted to in the house. The apartment complex represents a zero trust approach to networking. For an apartment, there is a locked door for the entirety of the complex. This is the key differentiation right here is that anyone who breaks into this apartment complex still needs entrance into the individual rooms in the apartment complex. There are unique locks that exist in front of each apartment door, and if someone wants to break through one of these doors into a single room, they do not necessarily have access to any of the neighboring apartments. Segmentation means that even though a single apartment room is broken into, that access doesn't exist throughout the whole apartment. Segmentation involves a layer of separation between resources to get better security protection. Threat protection can be seen in the locks. Each segmented room has its lock, which serves as its threat protection. The lock at the front door has a different purpose than the lock for individual apartments. 
there would be different criteria for who could enter the front door versus who should enter a single apartment. Azure translates these principles into several solutions to build a zero trust approach network. DDoS protection, Azure WAF, and Azure Firewall all serve as threat protection resources. They help to detect and mitigate attacks, WAF at the application level, and Firewall at the network level. Azure Firewall, Private Link, Network Security Groups, and Application Security Groups serve as segmentation resources. These components all integrate well with each other and create the cohesive zero trust network approach that organizations need. We'll be taking a closer look at these services later in the presentation. So in this section, we'll break down a scenario on multi-layered segmentation and how Azure services solve the problem. Major security alert. A corporate network breach has taken place and your company resources have been attacked. Your company employed a flat corporate network and the initial firewall on the corporate network was broken into. All the resources attached to the corporate network have been compromised. The network pattern to the right is not very secure. There is no segmentation deployed. So similar to the house analogy, once you get in, you have access to all the rooms in the entire house. Let's figure out how to mitigate this attack and stop it from spreading before all individual resources are compromised. The single virtual network model is the most simplistic model for the zero trust approach. To the right is a network pattern. A single virtual network has a virtual network represented by the larger box. Inside the virtual network are subnets that have network security groups or application security groups. Each subnet can contain resources. So the services creating segmentation in this structure uh, are the network security groups, or the NSGs, and application security groups, or the ASGs. A network security group can allow or deny inbound or outbound traffic from several types of Azure resources. The traffic can be controlled by protocol, such as TCP or UDP, direction of traffic, such as inbound or outbound, port number, and source or destination IP address. Application security groups enable network security to be configured as an extension of an application structure. So NSGs can be seen as a more common way to govern traffic at this sort of level. With this, traffic can be controlled from two places in the single virtual network model. Traffic can be controlled when it's directly entering the virtual network, such as from the public internet, or traffic can also be controlled between resources within the virtual network, such as from subnet to subnet. So let's walk through this model and see the NSGs and ASGs at work. In this model, the web service subnet and database subnet can control traffic between each other. The web service subnet can also communicate directly to the internet, while the database service subnet denies any traffic from the internet. The database service subnet essentially only accepts specific types of traffic from the web service subnet. If a security attack takes place, the security attack can only breach the web service subnet initially. So with strong NSG and ASG traffic filtering, the database service should still be attacked. So this is an example of effective segmentation at a very small level in this single virtual network model. The single virtual network pattern is great at segmenting at a single virtual network level. However, the single virtual network serves more as a building block than a complete solution. The single virtual network works when the network size is small and the network is within a single Azure region. So the new solution we have is peered virtual networks. Peered virtual networks take the single virtual network building block and creates a network pattern that is multi-region and larger in size. The single virtual network introduce, introduces segmentation principles within a virtual network. Period virtual networks introduces segmentation principles between several virtual networks. So looking at the graph on the right, we can see two single virtual networks within the peered network. These are both two separate virtual networks for independent applications, applications one and application two. Through peering, these applications can communicate directly to each other. This is the main benefit of peering. In addition, there's several principles to apply to peering as well. Peering can allow virtual networks to communicate within the same Azure region and different Azure regions. So some place in West US can communicate to East US, it's going to communicate to Europe or anywhere else in the world. Network security groups also apply uh, in the peering context. 
NSGs can filter traffic between virtual networks and ensure these peer virtual networks are properly segmented. The last big aspect of, of principle of the peer virtual networks is the principle of built-in segmentation that exists between virtual networks. Peer can make sure that any sort of connection between virtual networks has to be explicitly peer to be able to communicate. So an example illustrating this principle is let's say you have three VNets, VNets 1, 2, and 3. And you want VNet 1 to talk to VNet 3. The only way to do this is to explicitly peer VNet 1 to VNet 3. What would not work is if you were to peer VNet 1 to VNet 2 and VNet 2 to VNet 3. Even though both VNet 1 and VNet 3 share VNet 2 as a common peering partner, there is still no direct peering link between VNet1 and VNet3. So peer virtual networking is a great networking pattern for medium-sized networks that span multiple regions. However, peer virtual networks have a major drawback with scalability. Repeating the point made earlier, virtual networks have to be explicitly peered to talk to one another. When a network pattern has tens if not hundreds of virtual networks, far too many direct peer connections have to be made if there is not some greater strategy in peering in the virtual networks. Peering is an essential component to having a complex multi-region network pattern, but there has to be a strategy for using peering to scale out a segmented network. The hub and spoke virtual network pattern is the ideal virtual network pattern for large network patterns over several regions. The building blocks for the hub and spoke model are familiar. The single virtual network patterns are the leftmost and rightmost virtual networks. These virtual networks are known as spokes. The peer virtual network component can be seen in the errors from the central hub. VNet to the two side virtual networks. On the hub virtual network is an Azure firewall. Azure firewall can filter a variety of traffic types and offer high availability for the hub virtual network. So what makes this pattern so good? First, segmentation exists at every level. The hub VNet and spokes are separated by having a traffic filtering resource such as firewall, NSG, or ASG. Peering is optimized in this solution. Instead of each spoke virtual network connecting to every other spoke virtual network, they just connect to the hub. This becomes significantly easier to manage when a new spoke is added. Just connect it to the hub, that's it. For multi-region network patterns, a new hub VNet is created for the region. The hub VNet connects to all other hub VNets in the network, making it a very simple setup. So now that we have this as, as a clearly defined preferred segmented network pattern, let's put it to the test. Here's the original network breach taking place. As we can see again, the flat corporate network on the left experiences a breach at the central virtual network. That flat corporate network then exposes all of their attached resources to the security threat. Now on the right, we will check out our zero trust approach hub and spoke model. The initial breach still takes place and passes to the hub VNet. You can see this by the red out outlined VNet. At the hub VNet, the breach is able to travel to the virtual network in the bottom right. The other virtual networks are protected by their separate NSGs at each virtual network level. Then finally, each resource has its own subnet and is only impacted by traffic that is not filtered by the NSG or ASG associated with the given subnet. As you can see, there is one resource that has been impacted at the end of this, highlighted in red within the, the bottom rightmost subnet. This overall picture and model highlights the two key principles of segmentation. First, the breach in the hub model have to experience several layers of segmentation and pass through different traffic filtering resources until it successfully breached a resource. This is really difficult to accomplish and requires the security threat to bypass lots of security in the way. Secondly, the breach is contained. Every other resource in the hub and spoke model has their own traffic filtering. The breach is not able to reach other resources unless their traffic filtering would have initially allowed the breach to take place. So the hub and spoke model can be seen as a network pattern that can contain breaches as well as mitigate breaches to begin with. It is one of the successful network patterns that exemplifies the zero trust model approach through creating multiple layers of segmentation between all resources in a network. To build on the hub and spoke model, we need proper threat protection before the threat even reaches the hub VNet to begin with. So with that segue, I'll now walk right through the comprehensive threat protection. I'll break down a scenario on threat protection and examine Azure's comprehensive solution in addressing them. So today is just not the corporate network's day. This time, we have several types of security threats attacking the corporate network directly. 
The first attack is a network player attack known as data exfiltration attacks. They utilize malware uh, to commit data theft. It's commonly used to steal things like personal information, credit cards, banking information, among other things. The SQL ejection is an application layer attack. SQL injections have historically been seen as one of the most frequent attack types, in which a SQL statement is ejected in code that can directly harm a company's databases. At the bottom, we have a volumetric DDoS attack, which is a distributed denial of service attack that floods the network with too much traffic. So these are just a sample of the variety of attacks any public facing network can experience. In order to protect against all of these attacks, we need to have a comprehensive security solution that does not work only now, but will be prepared to take on the future evolution of security threats. Web application attacks, malicious bots, DDoS attacks, and malicious insider attacks are the major attack categories that a network should be protected against. The attack examples provided are often the most common attacks seen for the broader categories discussed. The first category is web application attacks. Web application attacks are layer 7 attacks that exist with the HTTPS and HTTP protocol. Most networks will have several web-facing applications and be vulnerable to this category of attacks. The example attacks from this category are from OWASP Top 10, which is the industry standard for web application security. SQL injection was described earlier, but is the addition of a malicious SQL st statement when accessing a network. The most common example is the statement 1 equals 1 associated with others, some other standard query statement. OS command injection is a vulnerability that allows an attacker to execute OS commands on the server running the application, compromise the application service as well. Moving on to the second broader category is malicious bots. Malicious bots are when bots are used to target web applications. So two examples would be content scraping and price scraping. Content scraping is when a bot copies content and the content is posted elsewhere. Price scraping is using bots to monitor prices for competitive goods and adjusting the price of your own sold good accordingly. The third sort of broader category is DDoS attacks, and DDoS attacks are attacks that flood networks of traffic. Two main examples of DDoS attacks would be TCP and UDP floods. TCP floods involve sending SYN packets to the servers um, in the initial TCP handshake protocol. So it's sending these SYN packets without the intention of actually creating the connection. UDP floods involve sending traffic to several different ports on the server and flooding them individually. The last larger category is malicious insider attacks. Malicious insider attacks target network infrastructure services. So attacks on these include data exfiltration, which was also discussed earlier. Um, data exfiltration is an attack meaning to try to steal personal information from the individual. So this is an, ex this is an exhaustive list of threat types. Um, and all these, all these sort of threat types require a package of security solutions to be properly addressed. The three major Azure solutions to protect against web application attacks, malicious bots, DDoS attacks, and malicious insider attacks are Azure WAF, Azure DDoS Protection, and Azure Firewall. Additionally, Private Link can be used as a service to address insider attacks as a segmentation tool. All of these services can be looked at in further detail through the aka.ms links below each service type. So first, it's important to talk about what makes Microsoft solutions great. Microsoft benefits from the quantity and variety of Microsoft first-party products that we support on our platforms. These products include Bing, which is a search engine, Teams as a collaboration tool, and Xbox as a gaming platform, among others. These are all tools that have had long operational experience and run visible workloads. With this, Microsoft has a vast amount of threat intelligence from this deep operational experience and security landscape visibility. So simply put, the security solutions in Azure have a much more complex and complete threat intelligence than its competitors. So with this threat intelligence in mind, I'll break down the network and services that benefit from Microsoft's threat intelligence and provide threat protection for your resources. First, we have Azure Web Location Firewall, or Azure WAF. Azure Web Application Firewall is a Layer 7 firewall that focuses on the HTTP and HTTPS protocols. It provides centralized protection for web applications or common exploits and vulnerabilities. These exploits are prevented close to the attack sources. So overall, WAF is a solution that works against web application attacks and malicious bots. So some of the main features included are that WAF has built-in OWASP Top 10 managed rule sets, 
This rule set protects against several types of attacks, such as cross-site scripting, Java attacks, SQL injections, among others. WAF also has a bot protection rule set that will identify if a bot is good, bad, or unknown, and take action. Good bots that are allowed will be bots such as validated search engines. Bad bots who could have falsified their identity can be denied by the WAF. Custom rule sets exist that allow the WAF to take action based off of IP address, geographic location, HTTP parameters, among other characteristics. And lastly, WAF has extensive monitoring and alerting with Azure Security Center and Azure Sentinel. Log Analytics pairs well with WAF, allowing users to see their WAF data. The next product is Azure DDoS. And Azure DDoS protection provides always-on traffic monitoring and real-time mitigation for DDoS attacks. Azure's global capacity can be used for Azure DDoS protection to help distribute and mitigate attacks across several regions. So some of the key features noticed in DDoS are that attack detection is always on, there's near real-time monitoring and alerts, and application-based mitigation policies can be used to stop the attack. Azure Firewall can leverage network connectivity policies across virtual networks. Firewall allows users to configure connectivity policies from layers 3 to layer 7. Firewall additionally utilizes Microsoft Threat Intelligence to deny known malicious IPs. Azure Firewall serves as a solution to solve malicious insider attacks when they take place over a public IP. So some of the key features in Azure Firewall include the filtering of network NAT, and application traffic, filtering outbound, inbound, VNet, and hybrid traffic, then DevOps integration and logging and monitoring through the log analytics. And lastly, Azure Private Link can be used with Azure services and Azure hosted customer owned services over a private endpoint. Your network does not need to be exposed to the public internet. So while this is not directly a threat protection solution, Azure Private Link can be used to help prevent data exfiltration attacks. Private Link allows only the map resources to be accessed through the private endpoint, limiting the resources accessible for a data exfiltration attack to begin with. So overall, some of the key features of Azure Private Link is the ability for Azure Private Link to privately access services on Azure, the ability for Private Link to be able resources to be accessed on premise and peer networks privately, and the ability to prevent the leakage of data for your resources. So the original problem posed was how to best protect your corporate network from the variety of attacks it may face. The green box shows the ideal threat protection layout in conjunction with the hub and spoke model introduced earlier. From the public internet level, the global WAF will filter out any SQL injection attacks, Azure DDoS protection will filter mitigate any DDoS attacks, and Azure Firewall will limit any network layer attacks. The security stack is thorough and addresses many of the security concerns seen today and in the future through Microsoft's threat intelligence. Additionally, the security model also aligns with the hub and spoke segmentation model. The threat protection services greatly limit threats from reaching the hub virtual network. Threat protection prior to the hub limits the potential breaches that can come from the hub and reach any of the spoke virtual networks. So the service solutions that Azure offers in both threat protection and segmentation allows Azure to achieve a zero trust approach network pattern. So lastly, let's check out the short demonstration on one of our Azure services. Great threat protection requires several Azure resources to work in conjunction with each other to protect your network. Here we will go showcase Azure's global WAF, a walk through how to configure the WAF with Azure front door and demonstrate its ability to protect from the most prevalent threats. Lastly, I'll run through the login so you can see the threats that the WAF is protecting the network from. The first thing we're gonna show is how to be able to make a WAF policy. So you see a demo WAF policy there, uh, I'll make another demo WAF policy. So to make a WAF policy, you navigate to the Azure Web Application Firewall resource by typing in Web Application Firewall in the search bar. Making a policy, I would first click the Add button. And for us, we're making a global front door policy for a global Web Application Firewall. Policy for here, you would pick front door for a resource group you would be able to select a resource group for all of your Azure resources. So not just your web application firewall policy, but also your front door. This could be demo WAF, it could be a group name. Click OK. Choose your region. Shouldn't matter because it's global. Policy name, demo WAF. So next for web application firewall policy, you can choose what mode it is. 
detection recognizes when any of the rules are broken and will be able to let you know when those rules have been broken. Prevention will, when if a rule is broken, it will prevent that request, that web request to be made. So we'll leave this policy in detection. Manage rules for location firewall showcases all the rules that are available. Currently, you can see the default rule set, which is based off of OS top 10. So if we scroll through, you can see HTTP response uh, splitting attack. You can see a cross-site scripting attack, see SQL injection, and so on. So with this, we can make custom rules for WAF as well. If we wanted to, we could directly add any rules that revolve around geolocation, around IP addressing, around the size of the request, or a specific string, which could be in the request header, body, arguments, the URI, et cetera. So these are sort of the base functionalities of a application firewall. You would also associate it to a front end host or your, or your code. So this would be attached directly to your website. So with this, we're reviewing create and create a web application firewall. So now that's being deployed. I'm going to now segment to make it an Azure Front Door resource that uses this web application firewall. Now we're going to take the previous web application firewall we made and put it on a front door resource. So here's our application firewall. We're going to check the resource group demo WAF that we just made and go to configurations. At the front end's configuration, we can choose what front end that we're going to connect the Azure uh, front door to. Here, we're going to choose a fake name, you know, a temporary name that doesn't mean anything, demo, for location firewall. We're going to select the location firewall that we want. We'll choose our demo WAF firewall policy that exists, then add it. For backend pools, you can select where, where the backend is for your front door. Um, for this again, we'll, we'll make another random name, test. You can add a IP address, back in host name, host type. Add this. And then lastly, you can configure the routing rules for your front door. Here, you do demo again. You accept both HTTP and HTTPS protocols, and that will be all right. So with this, we can review and create our Azure front door. And now we have an Azure front door resource that directly uses the web application firewall we created earlier. So the actual demonstration of the web application firewall is not going to use the one that we created. We're going to use a pre-built website and a pre-built firewall for that website. So we'll hop to that next. This is the default policy for the website we'll be looking at. Um, we can see the front end host that's associated with here. And we can see that the managed rule sets for this web application firewall are all checked off. We can see all the rule sets are here, all the rules are available. So we're now going to see how it actually applies in a real life setting. So I'm going to take you over to the website it's associated with, which is called OS Juice Shop. So OS Juice Shop is set up like any sort of standard e-commerce site. This one specializes in juice and juice products. So you can see the variety of, of products we have here, including apple juice, banana juice, an apple pomade, uh, which is unique to the juice shop, as well as some other juices. So this website is very secure. This is using an Azure front door web location firewall, and we can start to test some of those aspects of the firewall. So the first thing we can do is try a SQL injection attack. So SQL injection is inserting any sort of SQL code into a standard query that would give the, the person who's putting that code in access to, to the database or access to the website in a way that they should have access. So right here, a sample of this would be for the website, we can make an input such as search equals Q or one equals one. What this request does is it'll first go for the search bar function which exists in this website and look for the letter Q. The other thing it will do in, in, this, in this query is also check one equals one. This is a statement that is an infinite statement and just is automatically true, which throws off the entire query listed here. So what happens when we, when we type this in is that we get blocked by the front door web location firewall. So this is an effective way of WAF showing, you know, an SQL injection at like a very basic level. So over here, we have another attack that we could do, a cross-site scripting attack. 
So similar to the SQL injection attack, a cross-site scripting attack could also be made in the URL body of the website. So here, we're going to insert a cross-site scripting attack, which points to hackersite.com slash auth stealer. So we'll see what happens here. A front door web should be blocking this sort of attack and not allowing any sort of interaction to take place if, if a cross-site script is being made. So with this, let's look at a juice shop that doesn't have the same security as the security we just showed. So this juice shop doesn't have the front door available. Now, let's go back to the SQL injection attack. What SQL injection attacks can do again is gain access to things you can get access and get data and stuff like that. If we go to the login here, instead of actually typing in a legitimate login, we can type in a SQL injection login. Place a random password in, that's nonsense. Or do something like this, we may have access to parts of the website we shouldn't have access to. So right now you can see that we are logged in as the admin at Juice Shop, which is not the original account, because this is SQL injection. And through this, we will be able to look at payment options, look at order history for all these other customers that don't belong to us. So this is the impact of SQL injection could make if it's not protected properly. Um, luckily, a front door web application firewall does the proper protection for, for these sorts of attacks. So the last aspect of the web application firewall resource is the monitoring and logging aspect of it. So I'll take you to another resource uh, in Azure, which is called Azure Sentinel. So Azure Sentinel is a way to aggregate the data of a resource that you have. So specifically, we're going to break down the workbooks. In Azure Sentinel, you can click workbooks, and you can create your own workbook for a resource to be able to view the metrics of the resource a, bit, a little bit better. So this one's already made. So I'm going to view the previously made uh, resource that exists. And here it is. So this workbook breaks down what's actually taking place in your firewall and your web application firewall once our attacks are being seen. So for this one, we can see the amount of attacks that have been taken, so over 390,000, and sort of the interactions of what sort of attacks take place. So this web application firewall workbook looks at the block request URI addresses taking place. So most of them are, are the PHP MyAdmin. It can also show event triggers by name, such as the fact that there's request missing and accept headers is the predominant event trigger taking place. You can see when these attacks are taking place, and you can see the full message details of every single attack. So for this one, it's requesting request missing attack header at this time, and here's the action that took place on the global web. But so Azure Workbooks is one solution to be able to monitor your web application firewall. How this works is it does a custo query on the logs from your application firewall and how it's presented in a way that's a lot easier to, to digest. You can customize this workbook, to make it better fit your needs and what information is prevalent to you on your own web application firewall. So this is the end of the presentation. Thank you for watching and I hope that you leave this presentation with a better understanding of the zero trust approach in networking.